Hey everyone, it's Lisa at 7 Spice Life. I'm so glad you're here, especially today because we are making wine braised short ribs and you're gonna be so glad you have it because it is absolutely to die for. Subscribe for awesome, delicious recipes that you will love. What do we need for the perfect wine braised short ribs? Well, obviously we need some short ribs and they're also known as beef back ribs. Don't confuse these with boneless short ribs. You want the bone in because that's where all the flavor is. We've also got some wine because hello, wine braised short ribs. So buy a wine that you're comfortable drinking. I like to spend between 10 and $15 on a casual. This is a Cabernet. Some fresh herbs to throw in a bouquet garni. Um, an onion, here it is, it went astray. Some garlic, carrots, celery. So this is gonna make my mirepoix and then some beef stock. I'm also gonna add in some mushrooms at the end. But this is all going into everyone's favorite Dutch oven, my personal favorite, the Marquette Casting Dutch Oven. And the link for this Dutch oven is in the description below or on my blog. First things first, we're gonna prep our meat because we wanna get the sear on it going. And while the meat is searing, we can prep our vegetables. I like to work smarter, not harder. We're gonna season them with a generous seasoning of kosher salt and freshly ground coarse black pepper. Um, I like to use diamond crystal kosher salt because it's finer, so it covers the surface of whatever I want to season appropriately. Um, but other than that, the seasoning is gonna be in all the wine braising liquid it cooks in. So these are ready to go. I'm just gonna wait till that heats up. It's right there heating up. And then in the Dutch oven they go while I prep my veggies, but I'm gonna wash my hands first. Okay, let's prep our veggies. I have some celery and carrots, an onion and some garlic. Okay, you can see I coarsely chopped these vegetables. Um, they're just going to flavor the braising liquid. I recommend that you discard these veggies once your whole shenanigans is cooked because um, you don't wanna serve really soggy vegetables. Okay, my pan has heated up nicely. I've got my vegetables coarsely chopped and now we're gonna sear the short ribs. To this, I'm just going to add neutral oil and immediately season my short ribs all over. Coat all four sides and get them in there quickly. As you can see, there's only three here, but I have four. We're gonna make room by doing it in batches. So we've seared our meat and I turned the heat to medium um, and it has this beautiful golden crust on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. We are not going to clean that up. That's where all the flavor is. I'm just gonna add in another tablespoon of oil and then we are going to throw the veggies in the pot. We are going to let these soften up a bit more and then we're gonna add some tomato paste to this because it gives it that rich flavor that we are after. How could I forget that? Oh, it's in the recipe. Since my mirror pot is almost ready, I have three cloves of garlic and I'm not gonna crush them or mince them or anything. I'm just going to bruise them really well so that they infuse all the flavor into the sauce without having chunks of garlic in there. So I want you to see what this looks like. I just smashed it up and in the pot it goes. Oops, celery astray. It happens, don't eat it, don't put it back in your pot. Okay, very important when cooking with tomato paste, I'm gonna add about one and a half tablespoons, but in the recipe it calls for three. You want this paste, first of all, stir it really well, but second of all, you want it to turn like a rusty red. You want to definitely cook it before adding your liquid because it gives an intense, beautiful flavor, but it also gets rid of that pasty, flavor that comes from tomato paste if it's especially out of a metal can. So cook it off till it gets like really dark red, almost like a rusty brown. Let's take a look at what that looks like. We're 
we're gonna let the wine in the pot reduce by half and then we're gonna add in our meat and some broth and some herbs and then we're gonna put it in the oven and let it sit while we keep imbibing. So as you can see here, I threw in the broth, thought I was recording, but I wasn't. But um, basically after the wine reduces by half, you throw in the broth and you want just enough broth to barely cover your short ribs. And you'll see like some bits poking out. Um, and then as soon as uh, you put the short ribs in, you're gonna add your garni of bouquet herbs and I just tied them together with a string, you can see that there, and a bay leaf. Um, and then it's gonna come to a simmer and we're gonna put it in the oven at 300 for three hours. You want that meat falling apart, so let it go low and slow. My favorite way to cook. And with this Dutch oven, I can put the top on and not worry about this knob. It's metal so it can withstand the heat, so it's perfect for this kind of recipe. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes, I think. Thank you.